All right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Together in Thought. I'm your host, Jamal, and joined by my co-host, Taylor. And we're ready to jump right into it. I hope you guys are having an amazing Friday or whenever you decide to listen to this. And let's not waste any more of your time. Today, we want to talk about steps, um, specifically what our next steps is currently, um, what our steps were in the past, or whether there were there even steps to begin with. And, you know, how can we have been better prepared for this married life? Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it and feel free to leave in the comments or any engagements, um, any steps that help you, um, building a community where we can all learn from each other. That's how we believe, um, what church is, is that we're not your pastors. Um, we're brothers and sisters in the faith and that, um, we, learn from each other that we preach to each other and the best way to preach is more than sermons it's preaching with our lives and that's what we strive to do on this pod so yeah and encourage one another regardless of what that step is it could have to do with like physical spiritual mental um i think also it's like strength in numbers if you mention this is a goal i'm working on this is a step i'm working on it's it's encouraging to like have that sense of community so so tay what do you think our next steps are currently for our relationship? It's a very broad question. Very broad question. Because I guess there's a lot that we're working on. Um, but right now I think it's, I don't know, focusing on um, like our home and how to be our best selves and create the best space that we can create not just like in the tangible physical things, but like just creating a home where we feel or not feel, but like where we are motivated. We create an environment that is conducive to like our goals um, and staying focused. So I think that's really, I feel like my, my answer was also very broad in general. Um, But this could be a part of our next step. Like this is, this is a part of, one of the steps we're taking towards next step is figuring out our next step. Yeah, basically. But um, us doing this podcast is and continuing on this podcast mm -hmm. is a step that we're currently on. And the next step is to continue on it um, because a part of, I think like us being married now and having our own home. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks Jamal. Um, he's fixing my mic. Us being married now um and having our own home and stuff i think over the years we always talked about what we wanted and steps towards marriage taking steps towards bettering our relationship or bettering our own personal goals like whether i was finishing school or getting a new job or whatever and now i feel like there's so much more it's so much more real how much we want to set our ourselves up and our family up to be in a better position like it feels so much more real now so which i didn't feel before i i knew it was important that we we had certain goals financially spiritually all that stuff for our family but it wasn't as real as it is now so yeah i think it's continuing where we left off where before we even began before we were engaged we said for us to grow we have to grow individually and if we individually get better we're just going to keep getting better as a unit. Um, so it's understanding where we left off, where when we got engaged and started getting closer to our wedding day, like certain things got paused and how can we continue, whether that be your art or me figure out what I want to do outside of work, any hobbies and all that stuff. So this podcast is definitely something that we're putting a lot of attention and uh, money to and investing in it um i told you when we recorded last episode that yo it's it's crazy like it it feels so surreal that we're like i'm looking across from me and i want the camera to see this like i'm looking at you <laughs> with your headphones on <laughs> the mic and everything and i'm just so like 
blown away of like i'm sitting here i'm just like yo we tried podcasting before but something is just different right now as i look at you it's like yo this is a real thing like we have very very much high tech gear that's helping us produce this podcast like a lot and it's gear that a lot of most people don't start off with in the very beginning but um I think this is just a step towards us believing in something. So building something for ourselves is definitely a step that we're heavily invested, heavily invested in. Um, yeah. I second that with, with you saying, uh, building our home next month will be our, uh, next month will be our six month being married and living here. So half a year and we are already ahead of schedule with our, um, place. Wow. Mm-hmm. Six months. I was I was thinking like, how long has it been? Four months, three months? Like it's just I don't know. It feels like the time has gone really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been half a year. So even on our first month, we were like, yo, we already decking out the place. Um, but you know, we got desk, couch. When we first moved in, we were like, all right, we're only gonna get three things, and that's only we can get. We only we only can get a couch, a bed, and a TV. Yeah. And well, that we was just, the focus. Yeah. Because it was like we also didn't want to go broke. It's like, okay, we may think we can get more stuff, but let's just stick to the minimum because, like, this is it. Let's just stick to the bare necessities and try to survive as long as possible. (laughs) And we got literally everything, and our home is coming together, and it's really, really cozy. Like, every time, right before we go to our bedroom and I, before I turn off these lights, I look, and I'm like, yo, this is our home. This is dope. This is a dope space so i i'm i'm especially when i don't care about a lot of things and i figured with myself i was gonna let you just decorate our home because i honestly didn't care like i'm i'm perfectly fine with um getting the tech stuff making our apartment a smart apartment and all that stuff but i find myself taking a lot of initiate initiative getting certain things you have lamps and no you have for sure like you surprised me just coming home like, hey, I found this thing. And it's not like something random where it's not like something we don't want or need. Mm. But you just surprised me because I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, frugal living. We're thinking about getting a new lamp. So in like another two months or we want to get, you know, a dining table uh, in another month or so. And you're just like, I'll order it right now. Mm. <laughs> <I'm> like, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Like the part of me that just wants to be frugal and just like bare necessities. Like we don't need all this stuff, but you've surprised me. But like for me, my logic is that we're going to get it anyway. So it's just a matter of timing. And it's not even just about when it's about what exactly like earlier today when you mentioned, all right, so I'm going to get a folding table for our, our balcony. I'm just like, what for? And it's free. You said you wanted to. So when you work outside and I'm like, Hey, just order an outdoor table because at that point, the best way to save money is to not spend it and to not get a table. But if we're going to get a table anyway, and like, and again, it's not about going broke for a table, it's still finding a decently priced table, but we can do a little bit better than a folding table yeah. and just for no, longevity and, sake okay. of it. So then that's a whole different conversation that we'll talk about. But I like I found a specific table. I'm not wasn't saying like just not have a table on the balcony. Like a little, you know, for like hors d'oeuvres and drinks, you know, whatever when we're sitting out that out there. But I meant specifically for when I'm working and I want something higher. So I didn't want like a high table out there on the balcony oh yes so that we didn't have time to talk about it because i was working working remote and like it was just a quick comment i was like okay i'll I'll show him later because it's easier to show you than tell you but yeah no i just i didn't mean just like a folding table why would you put a folding (laughs) table in the balcony next to the other nice outdoor furniture right and that's fine like if that works for you that's (laughs) fine but uh, that's what i meant like okay specifically there's like folding tables that it's kind of like a foldable desk Mm -hmm. specifically for people who i guess work remote or hybrid that it fits a laptop and still your you know lunch or whatever Mm kind of like a dinner the dinner table that you have in your couch but big wider so that's what i meant all right so misunderstood (laughs) writer but yes go 
my gosh. House. Go to bed. Oh my gosh. So papa. <laughs> dog dog parent problems. <laughs> he about to he about to pull down this whole setup. Our dog was just walking across the camera wires and stuff, and then everything was gonna come. Go to bed. Kaput. Go to bed. All right. So <laughs> step, 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 steps. Um physical. How about we start like specific, tangible, like actual? Because I feel like this question is so broad. So okay, physical steps. What are physical steps that we're taking I mean, towards I was being very healthy? Physical. I don't. I mean, we can. Huh? I said all tangible things of the podcast. Oh, you did. You did. You did. Building our okay. place. I thought you were going. But into, uh, okay. I mean, you can feel free to. No, 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 no. No, you're right. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Talk about <laughs> physical stuff. <laughs> I was going to go down like the different layers of steps towards development or progress, wherever at one of the goals that we're putting steps behind is working on our health Mm -hmm. um, or like maintaining our health and bettering our health. So one part of that is working out, working out together has been really helpful. Also like you work in a, an athletic facility. So that helps you to work out and exercise. Um, Even from before we got married, I was doing like workout videos at home and stuff, which was really helpful. Like I found someone on YouTube who was really kicking my butt. Shout out to Pam. Yeah. (laughs) You know what it is. Um, But yeah, she was really kicking my butt. But it was really great. It has been really great to be able to go to the gym together. Um, We live in an uh, apartment complex with a gym on site. And that's been really great. I feel like physically, I feel it. And also, um, I told Jamal this one morning that we would get up at five, be back at the apartment by 630. And like now I'm wide awake and I'm talking to him, talking his ear off. I'm like, you know, even though we're working out and we're doing our own thing at the gym, it still feels like working together side by side on this common goal, which is also a way to bond and connect. So that's been really great. Mm -hmm. Um, Food, like trying to eat at home and having healthy meals incorporating vegetables fruit, all the like the basic stuff but like being intentional about it that's been great so tangible steps yeah with me and working out my relationship towards that being an athlete in high school ran, running track i never hit the weight room it was just do my sprints my hurdle practice and then just go home never hit the weights and I play basketball all, all the time. Uh, go to LA Fitness. Never walk right past all the equipment. Just go to the basketball court. Never really wanted to deal with the pain of working out. But now I'm dealing with the pain of not working out. Um, what was the final push? Outside of, obviously, I want to look great. But... I've been dealing with a lot of back pain and I want to say for years, I've always slept uncomfortable. It was been, it's been years since I've slept pain free and learning that the best fix for back pain is not getting a new bed. Cause I spent uh, thousands of dollars on different bed types. I spent thousands of dollars on pillows to do with neck pain and all this stuff so i never it's been a long time since, since i slept pain free but ever since i started doing lower lower back um exercises n- i never felt the back pain that i've been feeling for like the past four years it's it feels like it's just magic it's a cure so then the same way i tackled my lower back pain and for my neck pain because like i said i tried all you, know, all you commercials for these pillows and all these reviews, Amazon reviews, all y'all liars. I, it's just like when um, I dealt with very bad acne, proactive Neutrogena, all y'all are a trash. Like nothing ever worked for me. And even with all these claims that work for different people, I feel like I, I can never find products that work for me that. I've heard work for someone else. I always have to try something. And if it works, it works. Um, So with pillows, I tried every single pillow. And now I started doing neck workouts because I used to be afraid of doing neck workouts. I never understood you can do them. 
and felt like, yo, guys who worked out their neck ended up having no necks, right? <laughs> so I'm like, should you do neck workouts and learning that boxers do neck neck workouts to protect um, their neck from getting, you know, when they get punched all the time or even mixed martial arts and wrestling, like you need a strong neck. So I'm like, all right, bet, neck workouts. Um, and I'm not pain free yet, but I have experienced less pain. Mm -hmm. So now I'm working out primarily for health seeing all these videos and understanding that yo when we get old yes our body deterior deteriorates but that deterioration can slow down yeah um seeing like i don't have to deal with like right now i deal with knee pain and i feel so like ashamed that i'm only 28 and I feel like an old man and all these memes of like you feeling like you're 40 while you're in your twenties and understanding that this is a joke that can be fixed. And all it is, is just working out is nothing wrong with you where like, yes, you are, there are the rare cases where there's some like uh, genetic issues with your body, but most of the reason is because you don't work out. You have knee pain. It's not because you're 40. It's because you don't, work out your calves your your um quads hamstring all that stuff so now it's literally working out so i can feel good and looking good is a nice second reason but it's yeah. just to feel good yeah because looking i mean i definitely feel that too with us starting to work out together looking good is always a great plus but the feeling good aspect of it is so much better like they they kind of go hand in hand because obviously looking good can be a motivator and stuff but when you feel better when you um feel more energized when you feel stronger like for me it's like i didn't experience the motivator wasn't just like pain for me because i didn't experience the pain that you had but for me it's like being petite and slim all my life and now, like, to the point where I was getting skinnier now than I was in previous years, which is, like, odd because typically it's the other way around. You know, you get older, you gain weight, you don't lose weight. So not only is that just, like, yeah, that, that doesn't – looks-wise, it's like, okay, I kind of want to gain a little bit of weight, you know? <laughs> I don't want to just get skinnier and skinnier. Mm -hmm. Um but also it's just feeling weak, you know, like I'm getting, I'm, when I was working out, um, high school, college type years, like in between that age, when I was consistently working out, I was actually thicker because the way it works for me is like the muscle and eating more, all that stuff. I'm thicker, but I'm like a strong, you know, thick. Um, and I realized that for me, I feel weak. I feel like frail and lethargic and like not having a lot of energy and I hate it you know so that that's definitely a motivator for me is just trying to like not be you know 30 40 even 50 and dealing with some things that are like super preventable especially as a woman where well we like lose our bone um bone bone mass is like what is it Muscle mass. I don't know. Something. Muscle mass. Something like that. Muscle something. mass. I don't know why. I something, bone like mass. That. something like that. Something you know, like that. correct me. Whoever <laughs> knows the actual scientific. I'm not going to pretend like I know it. But, um, you know, like women have to take care of our our muscles and things like that. Um, so also my future goals of like we want to have a family, hopefully have kids one day and all that stuff. And I want to be the mom who like I'm not struggling on the opposite end where I'm too slim to, and like now I'm struggling to gain weight because now I'm I'm pregnant and I need to gain the weight to sustain myself and a baby, you know, or like sustain kids. Like I can barely carry my children, you know, my toddler, my infant, because I'm not strong enough. I don't want to deal with that. Um, and I think for us, too, it's like that other temptation of because you're naturally you naturally have a fast metabolism like us. I'm saying you speaking to both of us and we're naturally slimmer. People could be like, oh, well, you don't have to work out your slim. That's false. I'm saying like people coming from that mindset can say that. And I actually heard that recently. Like someone was like an older woman. She's like, yeah, I don't work out. I've always been skinny all my life and um, whatever. Um, so for me, it comes from a place of 
but there's so many things that you can avoid because just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're healthy. Yeah. And I've heard stories of people dealing with pains, aches, things like that, just because they chose not to work out because they think it's it's only to lose weight. And that's not the case. Yeah, it's being so hyper focused on weight loss and not enough talking about the benefits of building muscle because the, originally building muscle was literally just to be attractive, to get that six pack where you need a strong core just for walking and your daily functions. Like that's why you want a strong core. The six pack can be a cool bonus and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, let's backtrack to steps in our relationship. And okay. when we were dating, there came a point in time where our pastor at the time sat us down with his wife and we were discussing like steps can we take towards becoming husband and wife. And that was a very, very great conversation because, you know, at the time I was just freelancing and just serving at church. So money again has always been an issue of mine that we mentioned this like certain steps is going to sound repetitive since we mentioned um, before in previous podcasts, but specifically that conversation was just more like a wake up call that like, hey, because you had a job at the time of this conversation, so you were making more money, money than me. And again, I was still living, living with my mother. You was either living with your mother or a family friend at the time. Um, so. It just wouldn't work out at that particular moment to get married. So we were trying to figure out how can we get there? Mm -hmm. And obviously for me, I can't remember what was said to you, but I just, like if you remember and recall it and bring it up. But for me, it was. I need to make some money, basically, is how I took it to at least do like be at least for my end of our relationship, obviously, obviously husbands do more than just bring in finances, but I did need, I didn't need to make more than you, but I needed to bring more than what I currently was making. So I don't remember what was said to you. I don't remember. I think we were, we were in the same room, but yeah. Um, I don't remember. I think it was just more towards our, the way that we were dating that was more geared towards me is just being mindful of our interactions, being mindful of yeah, um, being mindful of like our heart posture and our relationship. And we want to get married, but we're not married yet. So be mindful of that and stop falling into sex. Yeah. Stop falling into sex. And then the specifics of like, are we calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend? Are we not? Are we dating? Are we not like kind of that odd scenario the the verbiage of it um i don't remember if this was spoken about in detail in that conversation but i do remember like although i had a job maybe it was just that i was thinking about it but it was like okay although i had a job is this where i want to be and is it going to be enough to sustain like you know into us getting married mm -hmm. maybe that was just what i was thinking i don't think that was said in the conversation but those are the two things i remember from the conversation is our interactions and then my job like my long-term goal of how to make money so yeah and that like i said like i i believe that was a great first meeting but the issue was that we want to talk about is that it wasn't consistent like that was our only meeting since yeah. then and it was like the importance of having steps there were plenty of steps that we were lacking in and eventually we fell off on track. Uh, it's kind of like a weird position for me just because for me, I've always had the intent of like marrying you. I just was like waiting for, again, being a creative. I'm like, all right, my rap and my music is going to take off. So then once that take off, we're going to get married. Boom. So like I didn't, I never had clear cut steps. Mm -hmm. I always had these very huge ambitious goals. And then I just assume that everything will fall into place once I achieve that goal. So whether that be was starting my videography business, all right, boom, I'm going to get these three clients, these three businesses, I'm going to make X amount of money. And then boom, I'm good. 
uh, me and Tay can get married. I, I have enough for my business to get our own place, all this, that, and the third. So I've always had these, what? I was going to say don't clap. I was trying to do it inconspicuously so you could see your thought, but he's going to keep getting up, so try not to. No, that's fine. Okay. Because I clapped before. But he's acting nervous. He, that's, his, that's his issue. All right. All right, continue your thought. Um. So... Where was I? <laughs> no, I threw you off. Yeah, you <laughs> so threw bad. me off. You he should just leave it alone. <laughs> the but dog I clapped got several up. times before he got up. Okay, go ahead. Um. So, yeah, I always had a way. I've always had the idea and the intent to marry you. I was just waiting for things to click before I got married. You, I never actually had tangible. Because I have a loose definition of realistic because I believe anything is possible. Um, I just think you need to just have the right work ethic, one. But working hard isn't enough. You also have to have the right intentions and working smarter. So those are I've 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 always been a hard worker. I just lacked in working hard at the right things and always giving up uh, earlier than when I should. So. That to me, I feel like we fell off a little bit and stray where when I was switching ideas, again, music, videos, I'm going to be a, I'm going to do photography. Me, I was just, again, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So like realizing that looking back, I was nowhere near ready to take certain actionable steps such as, all right, budgeting. All right. Uh, where you guys are going to live, uh, counseling on what is marriage and what specifically are the roles of a husband and how to communicate with a woman uh continuing to practice uh celibacy or abstinence i feel like everyone keeps switching the word between which one is which but waiting until marriage um i feel like there were so much things that we had to focus on individual steps before we take the steps in unison Mm -hmm. um and i think like in a way we could think about the things now that we could have done but as you said you weren't sure yet exactly what you wanted to do or where you're going to end up i wasn't sure either what i wanted to do um so i think it's we still needed the time that we took while we were dating and not yet married Um, granted we could have also worked on it while we were married like people say well you can get married and work on it together like figure it out um but there's a little bit of a liberty when you're not married to be able to just switch hats on a whim Mm -hmm. and and do all those things quit your job like i quit my job i want to say twice i quit two jobs while we were dating yeah and i quit a job that I don't know. Not to say that it's it's not wrong to quit a job, especially now. Like, our generation is wild. (laughs) Our generation is, like, two weeks, maybe. (laughs) Maybe two days. Um, So, I gave notice. But I quit a job, and it was very surprising because no backup plan, no nothing. Well, I guess art, my backup plan. I painted, but not really a legit backup plan. And it was a good job, too. It was remote during COVID. The team was great. My supervisor was so sweet. Everyone was great. But I just, I didn't know what I was doing with my life. Um, So I feel like we needed that time. Also, I wanted to comment on, like, you mentioned how that was one of the only, it wasn't the only meeting, but it was one of very, like, few meetings that we had with our two leaders. And... I feel like it's difficult because when we're talking about steps and um, goals and habits, there needs to be a consistency with like your community. There needs to be a consistency with accountability and there's nothing wrong with our leaders. Like our leaders try to do the best that they could, but I think the bandwidth was too much for them because it's like when you're, when you're leading teams, right? You delegate tasks, you delegate people to manage the things that you can't handle or counts, you know, like you delegate different tasks. And for us, I feel like there is accountability on our end. There's responsibility that for us, that where we 
I don't accept that. What? I don't take responsibility for that. Responsibility for what? You just said they did the best they could. And then there's part like there's a part that we play in the meetings not being consistent. No, that's not what I meant. There's a part that we played in our own consistency. Okay. That's what I meant. So there's there's accountability for our own actions. Like you cannot be an adult and continue on living your life saying I'm in this position because of other people or I made the mistakes I made. I know that's not people. what we're talking about. Yeah, we're so talking about specifically I'm talking back about then though, when we were not. Even then, I feel like there's a I still won't put the blame on all the mistakes that I made on other people or decisions I made on other people. So that's, that's what I'm saying. But I feel like it goes to show the importance of just actual tangible plans and community, like actual community, not just leadership. And then I don't know how to describe it, but like I'm, I'm imagining like one single one circle and like that's the leader and then the leaders connected to all these separate circles, but the circles are not really connected to each other, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be stronger when they're connected to each other. You're going to be stronger the more the better your community is, not the better your connection to your your one leader is because they're just a person and they can't handle all that. They don't have the bandwidth to handle all of that, you know? So I just wanted to. Yes and no. So then comment. Don't just be like all passive aggressive about it. Yes, yes and no. So no, then because comment, I you know, did, those, but then you said that's opinion. not what you're talking about. Like you, I feel like you keep flip flopping from, are, are we talking about in general? Like, yes, I don't blame anyone for my decisions, but I'm trying to find accountability for like specific decisions. And I feel like when the role that our leaders played specifically was more parental, then it's like as a parent, um, you are responsible for who you chose to be a leader of. But you don't think you still would have made the decisions anyway? What decisions if there were, are we talking if, about? If the people in your life were more present, you don't think you we would have still fallen into sex and of still course. would have so, uh, and, uh, and you still would have maybe mismanaged money? Like we're talking about like sex and money and mismanaging our money not being ready for marriage yet like we're talking about all those things right so no i specifically said why the meetings stop being consistent yes i'm not blaming them for anything that happened between us i'm blaming them for why the meetings weren't consistent that's it It has nothing oh, to do yeah, with so decisions of anything and that's yeah, so i'm I, not talking about the meeting but that's all i was talking about and okay. then that's why i said no but then when you said yes and no i'm like Okay, so then I agree on you. I agree with you on that point. I'm talking about something completely different. I'm I know, talking about I'm segueing into now the importance of community with habits, actual steps, actual tangible steps that you take, and having community within those goals. What is accountability, and how do you keep each other accountable? Is like doing life together with people, being honest with other people about your intentions, and then your actions with those intentions. And them also doing the same with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the meeting. Yes, it's like that wasn't just on us. I'm talking about the follow through of us. Like maybe we didn't know better, maybe whatever. But the takeaway that I'm trying to like give on is community plus habits is like works better together. Yeah. And that's that where. Sense? No, that, but you kept flip-flopping. That's why it didn't make sense to me. You kept talking about community, and then you kept bringing it back to. All right, so then I, I hope I reared around. Yeah, like, I, I hope yeah. I circled. I already understood thing. that, like, you need a community, which hence led into segueing to the big step of us leaving New York to come to North Carolina because I believe that I didn't really have that community towards our relationship. Not towards me, like, yes, I had friends, but, like, I didn't really have that community in a sense of I didn't have a married couple that I felt, like, poured into me physically. I I had to look up to people on YouTube and, like, learn and read marriage books and shadow mentor people that were actually doing this thing that I felt were authentic. So then... Even coming down here and meeting your aunt and uncle, your aunt and uncle was the only couple that I personally look up to that I feel like we're keeping it real. One, in their marriage, and two, more importantly, 
keeping their marriage real with me. And that doesn't make them, doesn't mean they were, they were perfect, but that's again, authenticity and keeping it real with me. So when we moved down to North Carolina and we lived with them for a year and seeing again, the ins and outs of a home, people think that I, I needed like the perfect husband and wife. But no, being living in close proximity of seeing the golden times and the not so good times. That's where I felt real, real like marriage counseling put in front of my face of conflict resolution, compromising uh, love languages, all this stuff. Again, learning from books and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, for me personally, Community doesn't have a specific number. I feel like you just, I feel like you, you need at least one person. Again, the more, the better almost kind of, but like when it comes specifically to marriage, I just needed one married couple that I feel like were pouring into me authentically. And that's why it's like, I didn't have a selection that I can choose of. I just needed one. And that happened to be your family and that's really all I needed. Plus the times that we're in with virtual things and people vlogging their relationships and all this stuff, learning the good and the bad. Like I don't have to go through that, there, that turmoil. Someone else has already went through it and they either made a video or wrote a book on it and learning from the mistakes of others. And that's how like, I felt like I grew more marriage minded and started formulating the proper steps Mm -hmm. to get married to you. And that first step was relocating where I was and changing my environment. Yeah. So on from dating to now the habits in our dating life to the habits now, what are some of the changes, evolutions that you've seen throughout our step, like the way that we went through steps or decided our steps in our dating relationship versus now in our marriage relationship how have you seen the change what changes would you like to continue seeing within us not in our actual steps that you already mentioned but like within us and how we go about it um i think it's definitely more higher stakes which makes it real again the steps we were taking while we were dating we were in the comfort of being in other people's homes so now these steps are before we were looking for others to make these steps again, whether it be someone that we watched online or um, books we read or um, real our people in our real lives. So we are forming steps externally outside of our relationship. But now I feel like the difference is now it's literally just me and you where we have all our experience. And then if we need help, obviously we can seek help, but now it feels like now since we, become more aware of our wants and needs all of our steps like all this planning is honestly more so between me and you and us getting used to like hey this is the life that me and you want we don't have to live how other people want us to live or put on a facade of how we live like no tay let's sit down like how do where do we want to go mm -hmm. because now we can plan proper steps and discern this step is a cool step, but it has nothing to do where we're trying to end up. So now I feel like um, what the huge difference between these steps now is that we're making them to our preferences and not the preferences of others. Yeah. And it's a lot more united, as I think you mentioned before. Like, I feel like there's also the distraction while you're dating one, you're not one yet. Like you're not one you know uh, together and the second thing is because you're not you're kind of still in this stage of are we gonna get married or are we not gonna get married and not to say that that's always so like outspoken but um sometimes I forgot who was saying it but when you're in the dating you're when you're in a dating relationship, you're still in that space of um, I can't think of the exact word right now, but like still kind of showing not showing your best self, but it's still a trial, right? Like at any moment you can walk away no matter how committed you are, no matter how committed we 
were, you mm -hmm. know, there's still a moment where you can and you're in your right to just like leave, you know? Um, and now I feel like, I feel like with that comes within itself a certain level of like, you know, you still have to make your decisions for yourself and I still have to make decisions for myself. And that's not a selfish thing. That's not a bad thing. It's just the reality of the fact that we're not, you're married yet. Our home is not our home, which has now, um, I feel a lot more like one that that's not even a distraction. Like we're not even working towards the steps of, okay, we're working towards getting married. We're working towards getting married. Cause that was like a huge thing. And now we're not like we're married and we're working on our home, which is a lot more fun than working towards marriage. Um, Go to bed. Sorry, y'all. Um, and I feel like, I don't know if you feel this, but I feel like there's a lot more sense of understanding and trust between us mm -hmm. now in this stage, because I, I see so much more how our like what we want aligns with each other and we have our conversations and even if there's something we want to do as you said like okay that looks cool that sounds fun but that doesn't align with our goal with mm -hmm. where we're headed right now in this season whether it's for the week or the month or the year like that's not where we're at right now and there's a lot more trust in terms of all right so Jamal and I have been having these conversations if he thinks it's not a good idea or even vice versa. Like if I mention like Jamal, I really don't think that's a good idea right now. There's a lot more trust between us because mm -hmm. the conversations are so much deeper. And as you said, there's so much more at stake, yeah. which feels heavier, but also in a way feels liberating, liberating and much more simpler. Or maybe that's just like where I'm at right now. Just like things are so much more simple than we make them out to be. So. Yeah. Um, Watching the dog, making sure he doesn't get into trouble. <laughs> this is so stressful. And he's just a dog. He's not even a kid. And he's not even a, like a puppy. He's an old man. Like he's an old dog and he's just moving around so much tonight. I don't understand. <laughs> Are there any concerns or fears that you have currently at this stage of our relationship? Right now? Not really. Um, I think there's always a little bit of nervousness with anything new. Like I know that about myself. I've learned that even more about myself that anything new is nerve wracking to me. So this podcast right now is still new, you know, really, really getting into it again, again, because we've put out things throughout the years. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I feel like none of those when none of those times matter like what was it two three times that we tried to put something out but they don't really count to me like now we're really starting from scratch and we're actually staying consistent with this is the most consistent we've been and we're in our own space like the dis the distractions and the the reasons why we wouldn't do it before don't really apply now like oh we don't have the space or now we got to set up, tear down, set up, you know, like we don't really have those excuses anymore. Not really. So I just feel like it's so much more real, which makes it a little bit more nerve wracking for me, but not because there's anything wrong with us like doing this it's, again, keeping it simple, like reminding myself is huge that like life can be very, very simple. You know, that really helps me with as someone who's always struggled with anxiety from like a kid. I don't know about y'all, but the first day of school was like horrible for me every year, every year. And when I was a little, little kid, grandma, like pulling me crying in the car, like <laughs> needing to bring, you know, change me into my uniform in the car because I did not want to go. Like, it's just horrible. Change is always hard for me. It's just the type of person I am. But just reminding myself that life is very simple. Um even in terms of now building this podcast, but also what I want for my life. Um, and I have a remote job now, which is going really well. 
But I feel like when I was in college, there was just this very smooth, easy track of how my career life was going to go. And I didn't, I don't think I had the maturity or the understanding to know what it was that I really, really wanted, like what I really wanted to leave in this world, because this world is brief, regardless of what age you live to, like, it's just brief. So how do you want to live it? So now I'm trying to figure that out too, like with my art, with my writing, um, that's another like step I'm working on personally and that's really nerve wracking. So my fear is that, um, keeping you and Ryder safe, if anything were to happen to me, um, another thing, bringing it back to health outside of working out, um, why I have so many health issues is more, is, per, is predominantly responsible of my ambition right uh me focusing on my goals so being a freelancer you know you're putting all your money towards software gear you're not going to put it towards a a dentist visit or a doctor's appointment so i have like so many holes and cavities and open broken teeth in my mouth so that is definitely a step and i'm trying to get that fixed this year um because you know my fear is that like if something were to happen to me, like I that's why I'm I'm so focused on building our savings up, uh building a a platform creatively that can create other streams of revenue so that like if anything were to happen to me, you're good. And again, I have no intentions of leaving earth and seeing Jesus anytime sooner than when I have to. Right. But um Right. That is definitely something that I think about on the daily that, are, you know, honestly motivates me to get up and, you know, get to work every day is that I want to make sure that, you know, my minds, what whatever minds is, whether that be you, um, my siblings, um, close friends, y'all straight. And um, I know y'all going to miss me, but guess what? Y'all not going to be broken missing me. So that's that's kind of like my intent that I'm trying to make the necessary steps possible to build generational wealth. So yeah. by the time, like we're not looking to have kids anytime soon right now, we just want to enjoy our youth. And, but when we're parents, we want to be able to do the things that we want. We want to show our kids like the world, the country, um, give them the foundations that, uh, neither one of us had where like yo your dad could be at every game or play or yeah. performance possible yeah I, like i never had a parent came saw, saw my track meet um saw me perform or do anything um i definitely am looking f towards fatherhood but that's not a that's not that's that is a step in our relationship that is not the next step um but <laughs> i think this next step is setting ourselves up um, to, be to, to leave our jobs. And then after that, to build something for ourselves and eventually become parents that can be full time parents. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, as I'm listening to you, I'm like, wow, he's mentioning like a real actual fear. And I was just talking like about general nervousness, just like I'm nervous about everything, like <laughs> everything new. I'm just scared. Everything under the sun. <laughs> everything. Um, but I, I agree. And I definitely, that just reminded me as well, like, cause you mentioned security. If something were to happen to you, making sure like you can kind of set your family up in a, in a good position. Um, and that plays a role in the financial goals that you have and that we have. But I also heard like the, the um what you leave behind not just physically not just tangibly money wise but your impact your impact with your family your impact with your kids your impact um as like relationally and what you do and I relate to that so much because I feel like now you don't really even though we're still young but I feel like when we were younger you don't really think about how brief life is like when I was a teenager it's just like you really don't think about death. Like at, at least I didn't, you know, and that's, I guess that's a privilege that if you're able to just not have to think about it like that, you know? 
And I feel like now I find myself so much more often thinking about the same. I don't want to leave this earth anytime soon. You know, I want us to both grow old and get to meet our great, great, maybe great. That's too many great <laughs> grandchildren. I, I think mean, even great as a stretch. That's not a stretch. It is. I okay. Maybe great. Great. I I have my great grandmother. Well, I, I know say. you do, <laughs> but you, we're right. not going to be the age where our mothers had us. Yeah, that's true. I had my great grandmothers, both of my great grandmothers, all of my great grandmothers in my life. And it like there's two factors that play into that is that and that's when we that's, that's at the <laughs> age great we, great great and that's when we have kids and that's when our kids have kids yeah, so that's like that's expecting <laughs> our kids to have kids early in their twenties which again they can when we talked about before our kids are gonna have a better foundation than us so like if <laughs> they our could. kids get married at twenty one then yeah, I could see them waiting like a couple more years and having a kid at 24, 25. So okay, again, fine, there's a lot of fine, fine. Just great. Okay, fine. Just one great. Okay. I see us having at least meeting one great grandbaby. And then you want our grandkids to have kids at early, their early twenties too. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess. Whatever. Okay. Let me dream. <laughs> Let a woman dream. Do you think? My bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I see us living a long life and the point is just like being able to meet our children's children's children. And although that's, that's the goal and hopefully for as much as we can help it, we try, you know, that's a part of why we want to keep ourselves healthy and, you know, trying the best that we can. We're not perfect at it, but if something were to happen and I'm sure even at an old age, you think back and think like, wow, life goes by really fast you know in another 20 years we'll be about to be 50 you know so it's like life goes really fast and the impact that i leave the type of life that i leave that i leave behind or lead now is so much more prevalent in my mind now you know like as someone who worries a lot as someone who my entire life i for as long as i can remember I've struggled with anxiety. I've struggled with um, being more in my head than I am in the world, you know, and in moments with the people that I love. And I don't want to be 50 and still not making progress. Again, not perfection, Mm -hmm. progression, not perfection. Um, There's still times, there's still moments where I'm, that's just, you know, something that I work on and have struggled with. But if I can see progress, that's something. If I can know I led a life where I led where I left behind more good than worry, that's good for me, you know? And it's it's a life that we steward. Sorry, just one last thing. It's like a life that God more into the spiritual and the faith part too. It's like God gives us this life to steward well. And it's like I want to get to the point where it's like Jesus says well done you know and in terms of my faith but also in terms of my relationships in terms of what I did with what he gave me with what he gave us you know so um so I feel like the last thing we should talk about is in clear definition or clear explanation of steps that we would take that if you listening that Keep it very vague or specific with us. But again, you take this and you mold it into your specific situation because everyone's situation is different. So, again, if you're early 20s, uh, late teens, um, focus on yourself. And that's what I had to do while we were dating. It felt like we could we like we didn't want to break up, but like it felt like we had to like step back into single singleness while we're still dating and not in the terms of singleness talking to other people but singleness in a sense of focusing on ourselves to become ready Mm -hmm. so i had to starting started to be focused on husband-minded things right and for me to do that i had to work backwards and focus on bride things and how that makes sense is we're the bride of christ and 
I started practicing how to be a better bride to Jesus. And that requires me to be faithful. That requires me to listen to my husband, Jesus, do what he tells me and um, submitting to him and loving him. Um, I had to learn how to do all those things. To I feel like it gave me a better perspective of what I'm asking you to do for me. Again, a lot of us are trying to jump into marriage prematurely without understanding the goals and being so focused on how you can serve me that I'm not understanding the how much that actually takes, especially if I don't know myself. It's it's already hard to submit and all these other things, but then understanding that, all right, but how is it hard specifically to submit to me? So like that was a real mirror I had to look at and being like, all right, I'm asking Tay to do these things. Can I do these things myself spiritually, obviously, Mm -hmm. and how Jesus loved me as the perfect husband he is, was definitely, again, like I said, didn't really have a lot of role models, but as corny and cliche as it sounds, Jesus was a real, real good role model for me and showing me how to think and act and be a husband. Mm -hmm. So definitely being more husband-minded and watching Husband Contact, whether uh, you read books, uh, we both recommend Sacred Marriage. Um, We're going to start a book club on this podcast and that's definitely going to be the first book that we're going to go through. Um, the meaning of marriage by Tim Keller and his wife, Kathy definitely will look up, um, Tim's marriage series sermons because those were phenomenal. And I feel like we both grew a lot from that and, um, definitely premarital counseling. Um, I want, I personally recommend that not because I personally, uh, went through that, because me and Tay had our discussions about what counseling is, but like if you can and have the opportunity to seek it, that I have a personality where if I need information or resource, I'm gonna go get it and find it. So that's why, again, I'm scouring the internet, scouring books, and feel like I've got the best marriage uh, wisdom from the best people out there that do it. But if you feel like you need more hands on physical approach, then I definitely recommend it um, because, again, I don't believe uh, marriage counseling physically in one form is a one fit shoes all shoe fits all that works for everybody. So again, me and Tay talked about this before getting to know yourself. And once you know yourself, you know what you need and you don't try things and waste your time on things that won't help you. So again, if it works for you, please go seek counseling in any shape or form, physical or virtual, however you see fit. Yeah. Um, and uh, after focusing on myself, men uh you need a job and that's that was tough for me as a creative so especially my male creatives if your creativity isn't um driving you the income that you need you have to suck it up past jamal young jamal baby jamal you have to get used to working and creating at the same time when creating is not paying the bills um you don't need to make more than your woman but you need to bring in something. And for me personally, my goal to make it more specific, my goal was to give my wife a home, whatever situation that works for y'all. If y'all can live in a parent's basement or something that it's whatever fits y'all. My personal goal was to give my wife a home because she shared that was a desire of hers. And I have a desire to give her what she desires the same way my father in heaven gives me what I desire, especially when it's in his will. So there was nothing unholy that my wife was asking me. So I had the drive to provide her with that. And God has blessed me with this beautiful job that I have now that we are in a beautiful home. And again, very vague, but focusing on yourself, getting yourself in a better position to provide as a husband, whether it be financially or spiritually or mentally, again, reading books, um, understanding sex, guys, you have to focus on um, making her come and not just so focus on getting your nut off. Stop watching porn, as we mentioned in a previous episode. It helps you focus more on love. And I feel like we can dive more specifically on each specific step, but we don't want to end this without giving you guys some actual tangible things. And this can be a continual process. This is not we're not trying to cram everything as possible into one episode. We're just sharing as much information as we can, and we will continue to make more episodes as needed. So yeah. those, that's my advice on 
the steps to become a if you have aspirations become a husband yes that was that was good stuff babe um i'm really just gonna come comment on what you just said i don't have a bunch of like you were in your zone right there giving giving tips um i agree with everything that you just said um just piggybacking off of that thank you for so i was gonna let me try to collect what I'm going to say first. As you said, for, as a man, get a job, you know, make money, be in a position where you can provide and, and provide a sense of security. And that doesn't have to be, as you said, it doesn't have to be that you're making more than her, maybe just different professions, different whatever. And even if it is, Okay, I'm going to I'm going to bring you and like I'm going to set up a space for you. You know, you're blessed and you live with parents or a parent who owns a home and you can rent out their basement, you know? That works. That's perfectly fine. It's just creating a game plan that you are um creating a sense of security whatever that is. We weren't in that position where either one of us as you said before, um where either one of us could like rent out the basement of one of our parents. You know what I mean? Like that wasn't our scenario. <laughs> um, that wasn't our scenario. Depend that's why, as you said, like n there's no one size fits all. Depending on your circumstances, there's different molds that will fit towards whatever circumstance you're in. But the ultimate thing is as a man, as a leader, like women do desire some level of security. And that's not like financial security. You got to just be blowing money and buying her a bunch of stuff. No, it's not even about that. But it's just, will we have a roof over our head? For me, and I'm like, it was like, yo, we could live out of a bedroom. Like, we can literally rent out a bedroom, <laughs> you know, or a studio apartment. I just wanted us to kind of move out on our own. Um, and I really appreciate that you kind of that you really took initiative on that and even now you're taking initiative in all the things and they don't even have to be these large scale things I guess also for men like the taking initiative on certain steps it doesn't have to be huge and grandeur it can be the simple things but it really does mean a lot because it shows like wow I can really trust this man like he really does have my best interest at heart I was just thinking earlier <laughs> Like without you, the simple things, my phone would be dead all the time. <laughs> I would be missing meals all the time. Like it would be, it would be rough. I would be staying in bed super late. Like it was just, just the simple things that you really, um, help me and motivate and remind me that you have my best interests at heart along with the big things, but it all works together. Um, and also what I was going to say real quick was what steps are you, are you getting to what steps it took you to get ready to become my wife? I guess I can segue. Yeah. into that. No, but say what you were going to say before. Okay. So say what I was going to say. And then you said like, what steps for me to become your, okay. Um, so it will segue perfectly then because I was also going to comment on like, I agree with the focusing on yourself, which I think sometimes we don't really put an emphasis on and as you said that in my head I was like yes focus on yourself without being selfish because I don't think we always remember that there is a huge distinction there's people who are like yeah I should focus on me so I'm gonna just do me and bump everybody else and then it's like you're just being selfish and immature about it the way you go about it and then there's people who are like, no, I shouldn't focus on myself because that's not right. That's not godly. You know, I need to focus on other people. And now you're sacrificing yourself and now you're not a help to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, so I was going to say that that was really great. And for me, that would be one of my tips is focus on yourself because it reminds me of the airplane rules, too, where it's like you put your own mask on your on you and then you can help other people. Because if you don't save yourself, now you're dead. 
and you can't help the people around you to also rather super survive. spiritual she's not talking about save yourself spiritually only jesus no physically tangibly i would be very surprised if anyone do- man no nah, i just heard it like <laughs> oh you trying to do everything yourself nah jesus does it for me oh my gosh super spiritual anyway um so yeah like they're and and we've talked about it before which we could talk more in depth in in a different at a different time but where sometimes we get so caught up especially in the super spiritual spaces of it's all gonna work out like god's just gonna work it out for me and i just gotta give 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 and i'm not pouring anything back into myself when god is not just gonna do it for us like He wants to co-labor with you. So there has to be a a prioritizing of your time, of your energy, like creating yourself to just be a martyr intentionally because that's just what you want. I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know if that's the best. Sometimes that's a calling that's put upon you, not that you necessarily go out and say, I just want to be a martyr. Um, Even with the martyrs in the Bible, like, they didn't just wake up and say, I just want to die for Jesus. You know, I want to sacrifice and give my whole. No, it's like, um, I'm going off on a tangent there. I'm not trying to offend the super spiritual people. But yeah, focusing on yourself. That's one thing that I really had to focus on guilt free in order for me to be my best self or a better self. And then in turn to be a better self to you, I needed to first be a better self to me um something that's very simple but again for sure work on it is the physical health exercising eating better having your fruits and vegetables drinking your water it might sound simple one the physical aspect of like obviously marriage you want to be in good decent shape (laughs) um but also too i think it, it there is a connection with your mind and your physical health, of course, it just focuses you. Um, it focuses you in a way that not a lot of other things do. Um, so I said, focus on yourself, physical health, community, the other thing. As a woman, I do think, um, so there's two things. Um, before I go into community, I'll mention like your own impact as a woman. So maybe maybe that's work, like your job whatever career path you're taking on, like think about that. However, I wouldn't say it in the way that you said it, Jamal, where like a man should have a job and be making money and should provide. For me, I think even as a woman, there is a part of you that wants to think about what mark you want to leave in this world. And not just this one singular thing, but like maybe just in this season, like what God has put in front of you. And what you want to work on, what what you can work on. So I would say, think about that. Even if you don't have a decision yet, even if you don't know yet, you just know, okay, right now I want to work at the daycare or volunteer at the daycare, or I want to be a lawyer, or what I want to. What did cook. you decide to do? Um, I was unsure still. <laughs> But I did know and still do know that I want to leave my mark in some way, shape, or form. I want to be artistic. I want to be an artist. And whether that's just in my home or whether that's um, having a gallery, whether that's putting out a book or whether that's just writing and leaving something for my children, I knew that I wanted to be an artist. I want to be an artist. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I decided I think before marriage too I thought about it and I realized that that was really important to me and I had to prioritize it so I would just say as a woman like think about what it is that you want to do and it doesn't have to be something super huge like you know sometimes we live in a culture where it's like it's your this is your season and you're gonna do big things and you're gonna be a world changer you know you gotta go out and live on (laughs) I'm sorry (laughs) um and that's great those are great ambitions but when I say like, even for me being an artist, like you don't have to be known to do what you do. If you want to cook and focus on cooking new recipes, cook, just cook in your house. You know, if you want to work with kids, 
work with kids like think about what you want to focus on um what your gifts are and how you want to work on them on a big scale or on a small scale whatever that is so that's the third thing um and lastly would go into community like you mentioned counseling and now my perspective on counseling is a little bit different or just developed a little bit more counseling is important but I think two things that may be an issue with counseling or therapy if you don't put in the work yourself because a counselor and a therapist cannot do the work for you. They can't change you. They can't do the steps for you. They can't mm -hmm. drink the water for you, journal for you. You have to, they are, the, the sessions are a tool. They are just a part of your journey. They're not the bigger picture in your journey. So one is putting in the work for yourself. As Jamal said, like reading, learning, listening to marriage seminars individually and together. Like we had a ton of times where we listened to seminars together, where we wrote and answered questions together and, and also in our own time. And that shows like you want to learn it for yourself. You don't just want someone else to do the work for you and give you the answer and say, okay, so this is what I need to do to get there. Cool. Like, no, it's a figuring it out. So one, doing the work along with counseling and two, having community along with counseling. Cause you can have a counselor temporarily for however many sessions you have them for, but community can either help counseling or um, substitute counseling because you can have counseling with a couple that you really admire. You can have a, a counseling session with, or sessions, plural, with a mentor that you have, whether that's in church or whether that's in school or a neighbor, you know, the older lady down the street that you don't really talk to and, you know, get to know her <laughs> um or your friends mm, maybe not friends yes but also like get to know older people and ask them questions one of the things that i learned when i was talking to one of my friends um who had gotten married a little bit before us was that she was asking everybody questions married couples what their advice was what they would suggest what they've learned like you can receive counseling from other people in your community from friends family neighbors and I think that's really important and you should have that along with counseling. And even if you don't do counseling, you can go without, you can go without counseling if you have the people in your life that give you that free space. So any last uh, commentaries, Mr. Marshall? Nope. That was my last commentary. <laughs> Is the dog in the shot? Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to today's episode. We very much hope you guys are not discouraged where you currently are, whether if you're aspiring to be married or you're having a rocky start. Um, nothing has to stay that way. You can always progress to be better. And we're praying for you guys, and we love you guys, and we see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Later. <laughs>